Okay, so this is a 4x4 four four system of equations. It is gnarly. We can actually solve a 5x5, five five, a 6x6, six six, or even a 100x100. Hundred hundred. Okay. <laughs> But, but, you know, if we get any bigger than this, normally we start using our graphing calculators, and there is a way to do that in your graphing calculator. Uh, I, I can show you later if you want me to. Uh, this is the augmented matrix for this bad boy. Uh, we have a zero right here for the X because there's no X up here. And then it's one for the Y, one for the Z, negative uh, two for the W, and negative three for the N part. And remember, this dotted line doesn't have to be there. It's just there to, you know for us, because we're trying to learn it. Uh, this is the X column, this is the Y column, this is the, the Z column, and this right here is the W column. Okay, we need to know that just for, you know, purposes of solving it at the end. Okay, so, keep in mind of our goal. Our goal is that all of these numbers right here would be a positive one. And the other part of our goal is that all these numbers right here would be a zero. That is row echelon form, getting the ones there and getting the zero there. Okay? So, the next thing that we want to do, actually, we'll put those back, uh, is switch. I, I think we did this yesterday, right? We switched these two rows. Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah? yeah. Okay. The, now, what we want to do, our goal is to do the easiest things possible. And since one of the row operations is switching rows, let's switch rows since this one right here is already a one. This number is already one, so let's put this one first because then we have a nice starting point. So we switch those. Uh, I told you guys you can write it like this, you know, with the arrows. You don't have to do that. Then you would get this. So now my, my second row is first. And now my first row is second. Okay, and everything else didn't change. So I'm just going to pop these up really quick right here. All right, there we go. That's where we're at so far. We only switched row one and row Now look at it. The next thing you want to do, I mean, this, the easiest way to focus on this, don't go on to these other ones. Oh, look, they're all ones. Oh, that's pretty cool. So far, they're all ones. Uh, the next thing you want to do is get zeros all underneath the first one. Okay, that would be the easiest way to go about this. If you do it the other way, you'll start getting frustrated because some operations will undo what you did. It just gets annoying. So if we make all of these zero, then we're, we're, we're bueno. Okay, now this one's already zero, so we're done with that one. That's a two. Can I, um, what can I do to make that a zero? You can't divide it by two because that'll just give me a one right there. So you want to subtract two? Okay, but you can't just subtract two. Yes, yes. Take this top row. You can't because you can't just subtract two. You have to add rows together. So we're gonna take this top row. We're gonna multiply it by negative two. And then we're gonna add it to row three. Now I'm gonna do two uh, two operations at the same time, and so. Now, now, after we do this right here, we know that we're going to get a zero right here for our third row. But let's look at the fourth row. What, what can I do to the first row so that the second row, or the last row, is now zero? Yeah, well, I like to say, you know, just multiply it by negative one, you know, and then you can um, add that to the last row. Okay, so the first row doesn't change. All right, the first two rows don't change. Now let's do the second row, or the third row, okay? Now to do the third row, we're going to, uh, so our new third row is taking the first row, multiplying by negative two. So take this number, multiply by negative two. Negative, or one times negative two is negative two. If I add it to that, I get zero, right? There's zero. Now the next one says, is a two. Two times negative two is negative four. If I add negative four to four, I get zero. Oh, that's cool. Okay, zero. Okay, uh, next one is negative one. Negative one times negative two. Negative one times negative two is positive two. Add that to the one, I get three. Okay, and then um, the last, oh, I got zero. Zero times negative two, nothing, so I still stick with negative three. And then I have two times negative two, which would be negative four. Negative four plus negative two is negative six. Okay, now let's do the next one. We'll do it in purple. Okay. Um, the first one, oops, 
There we go. Um, <clears throat> the first one's going to be 0. We take uh, 1, multiply by negative 1, we add it to that. And then the next one is going to be a negative 6 because we're taking 2, multiplying it by negative 1, we're adding it to that. We get negative 6. Um, and then the next one we get negative 6 again because we take ne uh, negative 1, multiply it by negative 1, which is positive 1. Positive 1 plus negative 7 is negative 6. 0 times negative 1 is just going to be 0, so that's going to stay negative 1. And then the last one, let's see, do we get, is it negative 21? Yeah. yeah. We have 2 times negative 1, and then we add that negative 2 to negative 19, which gives you negative 21. Okay, let's draw a dotted line right here. We have our new matrice, and we're almost done. Oh, check that out. So this one is uh, 1 and all zeros. That's really good. That makes you happy. The next one, we have the 1, and we have a 0 right underneath it, but this negative 6 cannot be negative 6. So which row am I going to use to try to get rid of this negative 6? You're going to think, um, oh, let's use the top one. Now, you can but it's going to mess up the rest of your stuff that you already did. Why? Because look, if I multiply a top one by 3, right? Because if I multiply a 2 by 3, I add it to negative 6, it'll be 0. You'll get 0, right? But what about this 1? 1 times 3 is 3, and you're going to have to add that 3 to the 0. Now that 0 is not 0 anymore, and you want it to stay a 0. So you don't want to use the first column any, or the first row anymore. Use the second row. So we have a 1 here and a 0 here. Yay, 0. Why am I happy about that? Because if I multiply something times 0, it's going to stay 0. And then when I add it to 0, it's going to stay 0. I want that number to stay 0. So I multiply 1 times 6, add it to that. And I'm going to multiply everything else times 6. So this is how you would write it. You'd write it like you know, uh, row 2 times 6. And then you're going to add that to row 4. So our first one... Uh, let's see, the first rows stay the same, so I'm just going to write those out. Oh, the third row stays the same also. The fourth row is the one that's changing. So we have um, zero for the first one, and we got zero for the second one. For the third one, we'll, we'll talk this one out. Uh, one times, negative one times six is negative six. Negative six plus negative six is 12. All right. Oh, I did something wrong. What did I miss? Okay. Um, Let's see. What is, okay, we have 6 times... Wait, why is it 13? Oh, what a dork. This is row 2, not row 1. Okay, so 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. Okay, and then we have negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12. Negative 12 plus negative 1 is negative 13. Okay, I was jumping ahead of myself there. All right, 6 times r, so 6 times negative 3 is going to be negative 18. Negative 18 plus 21. Negative 21 is going to give you negative 39. All right. So our first column is done. We have one with the zeros underneath it. This one with the zeros underneath it tells us that the second column is done. The third column is almost done. We have a zero at the bottom, but this three needs to be a one. So what can I do to this row? Yeah, you can divide it by three. If you divide it by three, you get one for that one. You'll get negative one for that one. And the last one, you'll get neg or, yeah, it'll just be negative two. Okay? Um, so now we have our first column, our second, and our third column are done. The last column, almost done. This just needs to be what? Yeah, it needs to be a 1, so we're going to divide it by negative 13. So when I divide by negative 13, I get uh, a 1 right there, and this is going to be a positive 3. So let's write it out to make it look all neat. This is what we have so far. Okay, where's my dotted line? I guess I didn't write the dotted line. Now, this, is, this one right here is in row echelon form. From this point, you guys can rewrite your new system of equations to, uh, to solve. Uh, this, um, this would be your x, y, z, w equals, that's a y, z, w equals, z, w equals, and w. 
And the reason why your new system is easier to solve is because you know what W is. You can take W and plug it into that one and solve for Z. Then you take Z and W and plug it into that one and solve for Y. Then you take Y, Z, and W and plug it into that one and then solve for X. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, the other way uh, by um, writing it in reduced row echelon form. Now, to write in reduced row echelon form, what you want is you want 1, 0, 0, 0, and then you want 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, Dang, my zeros look like sixes today. Zero, one, <laughs> zero, zero, one, zero, and zero, 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 one. Stop making fun of me. Okay. Um, these numbers right here, we don't we don't know until we actually do it. But writing it in reduced row echelon form isn't that bad. What you do is you use you work your way from the bottom and go up. So you want this one right here to be zero, you're going to use this row right here, you're going to use row, use row four um, to get rid of that negative one. Because all these are zeros right here, they won't change any other numbers. And then after you uh, get this one to say zero, zero, one, zero, uh, you can use this row right here to get rid of everything right here. Okay, so um, that's it. That's all I want to do for this video. I can make another video to show you guys how to make it into reduced row echelon form, but um, that's it for this one.